Good evening. An inquiry has found that more than a thousand children in Telford were sexually exploited over at least 30 years amid shocking police and council failings. The exploitation thrived in the Shropshire town and went unchecked. The report says authorities failed to investigate offenders due to fears that focusing on Asian men would inflame racial tensions. Well, our reporter Lewis Warner is live in Telford and has more on this now. Now, Lewis, this inquiry has taken three years to conclude. Just tell us more about what it found. Well, the report lays bare what survivors have known and have lived with for decades now. More than 1,000 children were sexually exploited, were physically abused over around 30, 40 years at the hands of gangs on the streets of Telford. The report contains harrowing evidence from uh, the survivors who detail their exploit how they were exploited and also how their families were threatened. All of this, the report claims, was not hidden at the time. The authorities, including West Mercia Police, where I am tonight, knew what was happening and they knew at the time it was happening and they even blamed some of the children themselves. Now, a failure to investigate was found to have not only left children unprotected but also uh, left them uh, predators emboldened. Now, here's a look at some of the report's key findings. Obvious child exploitation was ignored. Information was not properly shared between agencies. Key agencies dismissed exploitation as child prostitution. Exploitation was not investigated because of nervousness around race and teachers and youth workers were discouraged from reporting exploitation. Now, one of the 1,000 survivors has been giving us this reaction today. We've chosen to protect her identity. So the report really made me think of the survivors and how strong they are and how they fought so hard to raise awareness of these failings that have been going on not just in Telford but also up and down the country. And hopefully we can set an example to other local authorities to bring about change and ensure this doesn't keep happening to other victims. Well, 1.2 million pages of evidence were considered as part of this inquiry that's taken, like you say, around three years. Pablo Taylor takes a look now at what we know has happened and how this scandal has unfolded over the years. Allegations of abuse in Telford stretched back to the 1980s, but it wasn't until 2013 that a significant breakthrough was made with the jailing of seven men found guilty of running an organised child sex ring. Despite the conviction, levels of child exploitation in Telford remain the highest in the country. And in 2016, the region's police and crime commissioner admitted there weren't enough trained officers to deal with the amount of abuse. Later that same year, the Telford MP Lucy Allen called for an independent inquiry into the alarming scale of abuse in the town, saying that victims and survivors were owed the truth of what had gone wrong. Those calls only intensified when, in 2018, the Sunday Mirror newspaper revealed that up to a thousand children may have fallen victim to sexual exploitation over a 40-year period. A month later, councillors in Telford and Rekin voted in favour of an independent inquiry. And today, four years later, the final report into what went so badly wrong in Telford has now been published. Pablo Taylor reporting there. Let's go back to Lewis live in Telford. And Lewis, uh, we've heard some terrible details about uh, what's happened to children in this inquiry. What more can you tell us uh, about what happened to them? Well, the inquiry has highlighted the destructive element this has had on family. Friendships have been suffered. Um, families uh, have been torn apart. Education and employment is still marred for people to this day. It's found terrible evidence of children wanting to self-harm, um, showing this misplaced sense of guilt. And, uh, of course, we've been speaking to some of those survivors. One of them here, we've chosen to protect her identity and calling her Scarlet. A warning, this report contains distressing images and uh, distressing descriptions, rather, of the abuse she suffered. For decades, Telford was a town with a dark secret. 40 years of abuse allowed to fester unchallenged. This woman goes by the name Scarlet Jones to protect her identity. Years of abuse started aged just eight and continued through her teens. I was coming home from school but dawdling along because I didn't want to go home that um, an older man started to chat to me 
and he took me to um, a deserted house. We went down the back alley and climbed in a back window into this house and there was literally just a mattress on the floor. Um, he sat down and started talking to me, pushed me over and that was the first time that he raped me. I've, after being abused from such a young age, I think that I struggled to realise that this relationship was abusive because actually I believed that um, that's what I was put on this earth for, that that's what every man did to every child, that, that it was normal. But the abuse wasn't just sexual. When Scarlett became pregnant, her abuser tried to make sure the baby wouldn't survive. A warning, Scarlett now describes how she was attacked while pregnant. I left one of my friend's house a few days later and it was night time and I was walking home and I literally, somebody jumped on top of me from behind with like a balaclava and everything on and I was beaten to the point where I couldn't even stand up but the person doing it was hitting my stomach, kicking me in the stomach. I since found out that he'd paid somebody to do that to make me lose the baby. Scarlett did give birth to her son aged 15 but the abuse only escalated with countless men being invited to rape her by her abuser. The mental aspect of it is you just leave your mind and I know it sounds quite silly but you reach a point where I have a little rosy garden with a white picket fence and every time that I would be getting raped I'd just be in that little my little cottage with the rose garden and that is literally the way that I coped with it. I started saying I've had enough I can't take this anymore there was an incident where in my own home and I've been trying to get rid of him get him to leave me alone for so long that I remember and it sounds quite bad but I remember I was sitting on the toilet and he came in and I don't even know what I'd done but he came in and he ran upstairs and he beat me punched me so hard in the head that I fell off the toilet and smacked my head off the bath and that was the day that I was like I'm not taking this anymore I really am not taking it anymore and that's when I started to ring the police all the time. So I kept ringing the police and they'd come out and say, yeah, it's domestic, we can't deal with it. Everywhere Scarlett turned for help, she was turned down. She says one police officer she reported her abuser to even tried to sleep with her himself. It's almost like, here we go again. Every single man that had come into my life only came into my life because he wanted sex. Despite the horrors that Scarlett suffered here, she believes Telford and Rekin is a beautiful place. But fears, while she can now talk about her past, for other girls, it's still very much their present. Truly distressing, and that's just one story from one of the survivors of what happened here in Telford. And we know in the years that followed, uh, Scarlett's, one of Scarlett's abusers uh, was convicted. Also, in 2013, seven men were found guilty of running an organised child sex ring in the town. It was uh, the first significant convictions, uh, but as many of these crimes of this nature, uh, many don't make it through the legal system at all. Well, this is clearly an incredibly upsetting story. And if you've been affected by the issues discussed so far, please do take a look at our website. You'll find a list of support groups, charities and other helpful links. That's at itv.com slash central. Well, uh, let's go back to you there, Lewis. Uh, what are the recommendations in the report and what have the, uh, the authorities in Telford said today? Yeah, well, this bit's crucial, really. Uh, the report has recommended forming a joint child sexual exploitation review group, which will collect data from individual agencies and pull them all together and, and make a yearly report. Um, much of the criticism around this scandal and other scandals uh, like it is that agencies don't often talk enough together and don't share those details. Now, West Mercia Police and the council face criticism, too, for scaling down their child exploitation teams to, quote, virtually zero in order to save money. Today, officers here admitted that was a mistake and made an official apology. The report's understandably really comprehensive, but my initial response is that it's really clear immediately that I should apologise to victims and survivors of child sexual exploitation. Uh, we've let people down in our response. I think we've failed in the past to understand exploitation for what it is, the abuse of children by adults, and the report is clear that we failed quickly enough to put in place a strong response and to investigate the crimes that had, that had happened. 
Well, in the last hour or so, we've had this statement from Telford and Recon Council. It reads, we apologise wholeheartedly to victims and survivors for the pain they have gone through and thank them for sharing their experiences with the inquiry, which must have been incredibly difficult to do. The Independent Inquiry acknowledges we have made significant improvements in recent years. We are working very hard, day in and day out, to provide the best possible support for victims of this crime. Telford and Reeking Council accept the inquiry's recommendations, many of which are already carrying out. So what is the state of the services at the moment then? Well, the report says, and I quote here, uh, the police and the council have properly resourced dedicated expert teams that are well equipped to identify exploitation and help children out that are being exploited. So that's the state of play now. But it did say, though, it needs to really think upon and reflect upon why it took so long to get to that position. Lewis, thank you.